Hello everybody, welcome to Gaming with Blockchain, I'm your host AMI New. we're in part 2 of Rob Robots, AEX Farms, and the Metaverse. So we'll get right to it, and as usual, what I'm going to say is, again, the disclaimer is not financial advice, please just do your own research, always ask questions, but you know, never uh, invest in what you're not willing to lose, okay? And again, thank you again, I don't always say it. Uh, but thanks for following, thanks for sharing, and hit that subscribe button, and we'll get things going. So, what are we looking at here? Remember, I was talking about all these different projects, how much, how vastly different they are, can be from one project to the other. And here we're looking at Vitilium, uh, IO. This is now, again, a project based on real-world breeding of reptiles and, and, and lizards uh, primarily. I think they also probably would be investing into other uh, ventures as well. And what they do is that, you know, based on the breeder, you can have um, access to the first, the initial first born of that particular uh, category. And then from that, you again, the crafting element enhances that NFT to the next level. And from that level, you earn um, different rewards based on the like, perceived value or market value of that particular reptile, reptilian or, or gecko of, in that case. And you can see some of this breakdown here. Now, the only thing about this particular project, um, unfortunately, is a little behind in, in terms of update. Um, so I'm hoping that they're going through the phases of, of inventory in terms of, of finding the next batch of uh, reptilians to bring into the NFT market. I haven't heard much news about what's going on. Um, so this is one of those wait and see uh, projects and see what's, what's happening there. But if you want to take a look, this is kind of the project that's needed to blend in order to create an upgrade on this particular NFT. And it tells you what your, the NFT reward is per week. So I know with this particular uh, Python, I'm going to, I'll be earning 320 RPL of reptilian token uh, per week. Now, what's that value? That's another thing. That's a different category in terms of finding the value um, in, of the project, and that's something you know everyone will have to do do their own category for and do their own research on. But that's again the model. You're doing the crafting. You're doing the blending again uh, in her in, in terms to enhance that NFT. And then from there, you know, depending on the market value of that of that asset, then you can always trade that trillium. Again, market decides what that, that trillium, sorry, that, what that reptilian value is. So hopefully they, they get back on track on what they're doing with this particular project so that, um, you know, early investors, or even earlier than myself, uh, can again see what, what's going on, especially if this is of interest. I like it. I don't have any issues with snakes. I used to have pet newts, and the nephew had lizard uh, snakes as well. It was not a harm. I think they're pretty interesting creatures. But we'll see what happens, right? Not everybody has, feels the same way. It's just something to show you of how differently the market of NFTs can really uh, expand towards. So now we're moving on to Draco Dice. This is a revolutionary project in terms of scope. And as I said, it's one of those rare entities that you find. And I, I just enjoy the artwork. Uh, you know, that's sometimes you might catch me just on that alone. The imagination that's behind it, the the style that it can expand towards. And this is a heavily collaborative project. They they've created these uh, NFT packets um, with a lot of different teams across. If you're looking at it right now, three blockchains, and of course they're going, to, they're going to be adding more. So you have the bridge with Binance and Wax, and bridge with Ethereum, and probably going to Matic and everything else, and you bring cross utility, so it's not static and it's not sitting into one particular uh, realm on their own. So <clears throat> you take a look at it again. This is probably part of the show notes. Here's a particular developer uh, that basically put their heart into it you know, left their regular job that is not something they loved. It's something likely most people do just to pay the bills, but to pursue the passion. And you can see how, how that's unfolded. You can see where things are, are have headed into it. And I think, again, one of like, several projects I've mentioned, 
these are the things that will probably test the waters in 2022 moving forward what's going to happen in the next three months and i think this will those, this will hold off this will be one of those projects that can definitely challenge or, or survive the ruffles um moving forward now just look at this spectacular artwork now the gameplay part and i was supposed to show that and i didn't uh let's do that right now do a quick sh quick search for gameplay and let's do a quick review So I'm going to skip it forward a bit so you can just see the arena. And let's fast forward a bit more. So you can see definitely the kind of excitement that's happening here, and def as I like anything else, this is going to be revamped. This is just the pre-alpha gameplay. They've gone through a few tournaments and skirmishes, testing out the, the, the engine, testing out the model. Um, definitely not at the maximum st stages just just yet. But let's take a look at what's on the market, and look at the packs, and and, and you can look at the styles. So. Just imagine this type, type of artwork, the dice that you have of choice that, that could be represented in the game. And then, you know, you could choose if you want Art Deco, what would the Art Deco style be? And, you know, if you have a favorite, you have that kind of flair for something different, you can build that inventory um, as such. And I think, again, exciting to see how this kind of evolves over time. I know I'm saying that a lot because there's but there's a lot of different games out there. There's not many that are how we say uniquely different, and and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that it's not just an easy thing for a player to to jump into, but it's going to be engaging enough that you would want to go and go. Oh wow, this is this is I like this. This is this is really nice. This is going to be pretty cool. Um, and, and, and see where it goes. I'm curious to see where it goes. I can't wait to see what happens in the next three months or, or, or six months for this particular game, because especially when it's being developed as, as thoughtfully as it is here. So now, who are we moving into now? Immerse, let's see. Here's a the player little trailer. This...
Now, needless to say, I like this game. Needless to say, it would be interesting to play it again. i show you this right now, but unfortunately, it's not available for Mac. But, again, like um, the Farming Tales previously, in the, in the previous episode, I do have somebody who would be interested in playing this game, and hopefully we get a recording of that gameplay, um, and, and the feel of the game itself. But you can see, again, it's, 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 it's involving. It's, you know, opportunities in so many scales. And this is, like, as I said, for all these games, these are still open beta or, 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 or closed beta in some cases or even alpha stages. Imagine what's going to happen if, the, if the everything's done right, everything's done correctly, they take the time to build it pro properly. Things will, I think will go really well. Now, I can't comment on the, of the, on the UI, obviously, because I'm not in the game itself to see that. Um, but it looks clean. It looks like it's easy to navigate, uh, simple to move around, not overly cluttered in terms of what information is being you're being bombarded with. Uh, and as a player, it looks like you can take your time and kind of navigate the, the scenes and scenarios. So I, I, I look forward to eventually getting in there and, and, and testing it out myself, but I have to rely on a, a co-player right now who's going to be uh, venturing in and, and probably do some recordings and we will just bring those up to date for you. So that's in Mars. Colonize Mars. So we, I think we all know what's been going on with Colonize Mars. I mentioned this that we were trying this before. They went through series one. This is one of those kind of unfortunate situations. The idea is there, but the development process has been, mm, how I say, I don't say weak for the sake of weak, but unfortunate, unlucky. Uh, series 1's had an issue, Series 2 release crates had an issue, uh, Series 3 even, even worse off, and I think it has hurt a bit of the credibility. Um, not, I'm sure this is not what the, the developers intended, it's not something they want, but now they have to kind of work harder than they probably anticipated to kind of rebuild faith. And sometimes that's maybe a good thing because now you, you have to go back and kind of revise what it is you're intending to do. So one of the things they've been doing, and you'll see this a lot of, in a lot of games uh, moving forward, that they've revamped their UI. They had a different model UI previously and now they've revamped it in, into, the, into the new model and new style. So when I logged in, this was like, this is interesting to see. So these are all these little inflatable uh, colonies that are that players were able to amass. We we don't have a colony here, so um, again, we're not even sure if we're going to. Again, we're thinking about it because we have to have faith in the game and think, okay, what do we think is going to happen here? But like I said, I do like the aspect of where they, what they intended to do, what their heart was, was looking to achieve. But now they have to kind of, in some ways, kind of scale back and re reevaluate what's going on. So I can show you that based on their buy pack options, they have a great lead page that gives, brings you back into their Atomic Hub automatically onto their... Um, marketplace, which I think is pretty cool. I think that's a, a great, great bonus in terms of how they can, you know, if you're in the game and you want to buy something, you you're led to it directly from within the game. You don't have to come, you don't have to come and actually get out and kind of load a page again. Um, they have their store market that was in place, but now again, everything that they had on sale is now on the secondary market, so you have to find it on the secondary market. Um, they have a leaderboard again. If you're interested in leaderboard, the earn features what the, that means when you buy the earn. So I'm earning only 11.1 Marsha per hour. Nothing, nothing significant at all. Um, and and I only be, like I said only because I I just been having a hard time really finding out what's going on with the game. So things may change. We, we have to kind of review what our intent is here, and hopefully we'll see what's happening. Uh, there's the option now to craft elements, so if you have the, uh, those elements ready to craft, you can do so. Um, but we haven't done that, I haven't done that uh, at all myself. But again, I like that they're, it's in the game, that you don't have to come out and then find it. So the game stays active, you go to a different page, and you can, and you can find out what's going on. 
I'm not sure what these are helping the play experience do, except to say, okay, this is the colony that's in place, who the colony owner is. Um, so I do find it a little glitchy to get it activated. I'm not sure how much of a zoom. There we go. We have to be in to see it. So it gives you a little bit of description of what's going on, who owns that particular inflatable greenhouse, and so forth. So I wanna, I'm not going to rule them out yet. Um, I just hope that they have the chance to kind of rebuild uh, and kind of get things back on track. So that's it for part two. We'll be heading on to part three, and then we'll continue from there. So until then, take care. Bye.